In today's performance review, we're going to figure out if the Kobe AD NXT 360 is one of the best Kobe's of all time, or if they're just way too overpriced. But first, a message from our sponsor. What's going on guys, it's Dramon, and if you are wondering what this is in my hands, today's your lucky day because this right here is the Seasons Creator Premium Game Ball. And as you can tell, it's one of the most unique balls out there. Not only does it come in this crazy design and a bunch of different colors, but it performs just as good as any other premium ball on the market today. So if you wanna be that guy in the gym whose basketball looks like nobody else's, go ahead and hit that link in the bio. I've been absolutely loving my ball. It's been working out for me great. But if you don't wanna take my word for it, just remember, ball don't lie. Loyalty over everything, it's a way of life. It's that caddy music. All right guys, so as always, let's start the review with the thing that stood out to me the most when I laced these up, and that to me would hands down be the weight. The NXT 360s are an extremely lightweight sneaker, clocking in at just under 12 ounces, but most of that weight is coming from the drop-in midsole, which on its own weighs about four ounces. So when you lace these up, you are going to feel extremely lightweight, and if you're looking for something that's gonna make you feel fast and light, it really doesn't get any better than this because not only again are they light but they're extremely flexible as well and that just adds to the lightweight nature of the shoe itself as they won't restrict you in any way allowing you to feel like you can move in every direction without delay seriously guys i can't stress this enough the lightweight nature of the nxt 360s is just awesome on foot and for my money this is the best lightweight sneaker on the market today and a big reason why they are so light are because of the materials. Nike used their 360 degree fly net technology here, which basically means the entire sneaker is made up of fly net, and then they just slap this rubber outsole on the bottom. But what this actually does is it allows this sneaker to really feel like a part of your foot, moving with you at every cut, turn, stop, jump, whatever you're doing out there on the floor, the NXC 360s are going to be sticking with you at all times. And it honestly kind of felt like Iron Man's nano suit technology just wrapping around my foot. It's one of those feelings that's kind of hard to describe, but once you feel it, you're not going to want to go back. Now, as far as the fly net material itself and how it actually feels, it is a little plasticky. It's not soft like Prime Knit. It does have that fishing line type of feel that we've seen in previous Kobe models. And it's also a really, really thin material. So I do understand why durability would be a concern for some, especially considering the fact that these cost $200. But after logging 30 plus hours in these, I really don't see anything aside from the normal wear and tear. Now don't get me wrong, that is not me calling these durable by any stretch of the imagination, because to be quite honest with you, they're just not durable. I would not recommend these for outdoor use, they're not going to last, but as long as you keep them strictly for indoor use like I did, durability should not be an issue. Now let's backtrack a little bit and talk about the fit. I know I said I had a second skin like experience with that 360 degree fly net technology, but even then I thought the fit in these could have been a little bit better because every single Kobe I own in my entire collection, which is like 35 plus pairs, is a 10 and a half. And that's one of the main reasons why I love the Kobe Bryant signature line because it's always fit my foot extremely well. These, however, fit me a little long and I actually kind of wish I would have got a size 10. Now, I did talk to a few of my boys who also have these to see if they had similar issues with the fit, and they agree as well. These fit them slightly long in the front, but like I talked about earlier, this isn't really a big issue because the overall fit and feel of the shoe itself is just awesome, and it's honestly one of my favorite things about this sneaker. So I do recommend that you try these on in-store just to ensure that you get the right fit, because if you do, these are gonna end up feeling like a glove that's been tailored to your exact specifications. But if you can't try these on in store, worst case scenario, just go true to size like I did. You'll get a little dead space. But like I said, lockdown, not an issue whatsoever. 
Now moving along to the cushioning, like I mentioned before, these use a drop-in midsole technology, which features Lunar Lawn as well as Nike's new React Foam technology. Now I found this setup to be very similar to what was used in the Kobe 8s, but this time around there's just a little bit more bounce thanks to that React Foam. So overall, you are getting a very low to the ground ride that's responsive and provides a ton of core feel. And at times, I actually felt like there was just a little bit too much core feel because after really long runs, my feet began to feel very tired in these. And that just might be due to the fact that there isn't a whole lot of arch support here. This drop-in midsole is pretty flat. And there's just a couple TPU pieces that are pretty flimsy and they don't really do much. So the NXT 360's cushioning is awesome if you're looking for something that's responsive and very low to the ground and provides amazing core feel. But if you're an explosive player that needs a lot of impact protection, that React Foam just isn't enough for me to recommend for those types of players. But for everyone else, you want core feel? This is the way to go. Now as for the traction, the rubber compound used here isn't very sticky, but overall, it did a pretty decent job at keeping me on my feet. There's a lot of individual nubs in multiple directions to help bite the floor and they even go up onto the midsole, which is great for hard cuts, but these nubs aren't very durable and the ones around my toes wore down rather quickly. As for the rubber compound, like I said, I thought it was a little slick, especially on dusty floors, but after just a few wipes, I was pretty much ready to go. So if I did have to rate this outsole in terms of traction on a scale of one to 10, I'm gonna give these like a seven because like I said, the traction pattern did do its job. It's just that rubber compound that let it down just a little bit. And plus they aren't very durable. So again, do not wear these outdoors. Now, as far as support, there isn't a whole lot going on here, but stability with the NXT 360s is not an issue whatsoever, in large part thanks to that very low to the ground ride. But the back end of the sneaker has also been beefed up as well with extra padding on the inner lining as well as an external heel cuff for side to side movements. Now one thing I do want to mention is that the midfoot and heel is rather narrow. So if you're a heavy heel striker, I understand why you'd be a little wary of this area. But the good news is that Nike rounded out the heel here for a smooth heel to toe transition, kind of like what you would find in the Kyrie's. And this basically just ensures that you don't feel any instability here, despite it being a small landing area. And also the drop-in missile does a very good job at cupping your foot itself, thanks to its rather high walls around its base. But at the end of the day, if you're looking for a highly supportive sneaker, these just aren't that. So if you're an explosive player, a big, or you got weak ankles, whatever the reason may be, you feel like you need more support, these would not be the first thing I'd recommend. All right, so to wrap things up, let me just end by saying that I absolutely loved playing in this sneaker. It really feels like a high performance piece of footwear with cutting edge tech. That 360 degree fly knit is out of this world. And that cushioning setup provides one of the best low to the ground rides that you could get on the market today. But we got to talk about the elephant in the room. And that's the fact that these cost $200 for something that isn't very durable at all. And look, I totally understand why that would be a no-go for some of you guys. But for me, a Kobe fan and an even bigger fan of his sneakers, I was more than happy to pay $200 for these after playing in them. These are going to be in the gym bag for a very long time. It's already a go-to sneaker for me because they make me feel totally confident and 100% comfortable out there on the floor. So if you're like me and you love Kobe's or his sneakers, I have no doubt in my mind that you are absolutely going to love these for all the reasons that I mentioned. And plus, it gives you that mama mentality. All right guys, so that pretty much takes care of the review for the Kobe AD NXT 360s. Boy, that name's too long, but if you have any more questions, let me know in the comment section below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for more reviews just like this. My name's Jaren, it's been great having you. Catch you in the next one, peace. And that's one of the reasons why I was super excited to play in these. And this is a sneaker that actually has a couple of issues on paper, but despite those issues, I still really, really enjoyed playing in these, and I'll tell you why. But first, let's start, as always, with the thing that stood out to me the most, and that would be the fit.